So I'm going to guess just by the name of the game that this is based on the Schwarzenegger movie, The Running Man. But, um, I don't know. This might be totally unrelated. Just maybe we're about to see just some guy running down a road or something. Um, where's the button? There's the button. Okay. Let's start it up, see where we end up. So, loading. It's at warp speed, so we'll see how fast this goes. Shouldn't take too long. Oh, we got raster bars. Haven't seen those for a bit. Um, also a lot of garbage on the screen. <laughs> it's kind of funny how much bleed over there is between... Oh, we've got a intro hit this time. It's how, funny how much bleed over there is when there's any kind of loading or something on the C64, just into the graphics memory and stuff. Like, it doesn't need to be there, but frequently happens. <laughs> Oh yeah, you can see right here it says plus seven on the running man, so that means there's seven trainers available on this one. So, I'm not going to be using them because I like to see how the game plays normally. So, let's go through here. Um, oh, we do have documents this time. Okay, so scenario. The year is 2019. Uh-oh. <laughs> how to date your movie. I had so many thoughts running through my head, I had to stop for a moment there. Because <laughs> it's like, it says here, the year is 2019 and the USA has become a totalita totalitarian state. I don't know how to pronounce that word properly. But the th fact is, you had to go back about three years earlier <laughs> for that. <laughs> but anyways, personal freedoms no longer exist and only television distracts the people from their plight. One show is more popular than any other, The Running Man, a deadly cat and mouse carnival in which the contestants battle for the ultimate prize, survival. After refusing to fire on unarmed demonstrators, Ben Richards is wrongfully convicted and labeled Butcher of Bakersfield. This is the start of a chain of events which lead to him becoming the star runner on The Running Man. No contestant has ever won. All have perished within the game zone of a destroyed Los Angeles, hunted down by four lethal stalkers. In tonight's show, Ben Richards must survive, prove he is innocent, and expose the corrupt propaganda of the ICS network. Ben is launched into the game zone by Damon Killen? Killian? Damon Killian? Hmm. The host and inventor of The Running Man, he promises Killian, I'll be back. <laughs> Did he actually say that in the movie? Because, I mean, that's a Terminator phrase. But did Schwarzenegger actually say, I'll be back in The Running Man as well? <laughs> Might explain a few things if that's the case. Oh! I just noticed something here. It's the Canadian spelling, or the British spelling? That That's the way I spell maneuver myself, so it's not the USA way of spe spelling it. Um, through the four game zones of the TV studio, you must defeat all the stalkers and guards, fight off the attack dogs, and fulfill your promise to Killian. Okay, so I was expecting to come across a game like this sooner or later. Because the Commodore 64 only has one button on its joysticks, there's a number of games that use that button almost like a shift feature, whereby the direction you're pushing has a different effect based on whether you're holding the fire button down or not. So here, it seems what happens is if you're not holding the fire button down, then you can either jump up or stands up from couching, you can move left and right, and you can crawl, and then if you hold the fire button down, that's what puts you into a crouch if you're standing. And crouching also collects drops, weapons, and meta packs. So that's good to know. Um, pushing up punches. So you have to hold fire and press up if you want to punch. And then left and right turns, kicks if facing in that direction. Okay, so we got a kick and a punch. And that's with the up and the left and right directions. And it looks like there's an uplink code mini game of sorts. It says a symbol coordination game in which you must match two sets of symbols. You're presented with two sets of eight symbols. The left set is then mixed up. Two highlights will appear. These can be moved to the joystick. If the fire button is pressed, the two symbols that are marked will swap position. Okay, so it seems like a pretty simple puzzle thing then. So, and then F1 to turn the music on and off, and P is the pause key. Okay, let's do this. Oh, we got a title screen. Um, well, that does 
kind of look like Schwarzenegger. I mean, the C64 color depth isn't doing his face that much justice right now, but yeah, I've seen worse. Um, so let's go in. Nah, we're waiting. Oh, there we go. So, copyright 89, Taft Entertainment. Oh, that didn't stay. Wait, what? Why do we suddenly have advertisements for other games in this one? <laughs> And is this our titular running man now? Oh, we're gonna get a title sequence. Running. You know, I love it when titles scroll by really slow and. S Whoa! What does this have to do with anything? It's more so looks like half of a luge going down a pipe. <laughs> Or bobsled? Half of a bobsled going down a luge pipe or something. <laughs> and then we're back to here. Okay, press fire to start. During game, okay, we already know those controls. Nope, oh, more raster bars. Oh, I was wondering where the trainer stuff was. It's interesting that it went through all the title sequence stuff first. Um, well, it says enable or disable fast loaders, so I'm guessing they intentionally put a fast loader into this, so I guess we might as well enable it. Um, high score saver or trainers? Well, if we go high score saver, then reset, then we don't have to put in any of the trainer details. Because, yeah, I don't know why that is. Why, with, if there's a high score saver in a game, you can't access the trainers. And then if you go with the trainers, I don't know if that accesses the high score savers or not. Like, I don't know how that stuff works. I just know that if you press high scores instead of trainers, you generally don't have to act, deactivate the trainers. They just that are deactivated by default. Anyways, we got a Hall of Fame here. Um, okay, there we go. So, we seem to be have dog at the side there. At, whoa. Uh, that's our running speed, folks. Ow, the dog just freaking mauled me. And I just kicked a dog. <laughs> Well, this is not the way I was expecting the game to start. Oh, the dog just respawns? What? Maybe it's one of those things where it depends on where the screen position is. It's gonna respawn again? Okay, it didn't that time. Okay, so yeah, you do not run very fast, it looks like. <laughs> like, I mean, his legs look like he's booking it, but he's only moving, like, maybe a meter a minute. <laughs> Okay, so we've got a table here. Okay, it looks like we gotta jump over this table. We don't. Uh. How are we supposed to get past this? Like, I jump and it's not working? Well, let's see some more of these controls here. So, if we hold the fire button down, we can crouch. And we can crawl. Can we crawl under the table? Doesn't look like we can. No, crawling under the table is not an option. See so yeah, how we can... We have our kick there. It may be hard to tell, but there's actually digitized sound effects in this game. I imagine that's why there's an option to turn the music off, because the digitized effects seem very quiet. It's kind of neat that they actually pulled off the digitized effects while the music is going and while in gameplay, because usually that's kind of... It's not, um... From what I understand, the Commodore 64 SID chip doesn't have the ability to play back digitized sounds. Rather, there's a way to make it happen through a combination of taking advantage of a bug with how it works. Okay, and up was punch. Wow, that is a very delayed punch. But at least it works. And if we push up alone, we gotta jump. We gotta forward jump? What? Okay, I just noticed something bizarre. If you push diagonal to jump, you only jump a short distance. But if you just push straight up, you actually jump further than if you push at a diagonal. Like, will that get us on the... That got us on the table. <laughs> okay, the controls in this game are bizarre. Okay, so we're moving through this set here. Uh, <laughs> apparently I can't step up. So we gotta jump up this... Oh, platforming? Seriously? 
with a jump that goes this short, I'm not sure I want to do platforming. Okay, let's let's try getting up to like. Can you get up really close to the edge? Okay, now if I push straight up. Okay, that actually works. Okay, so do that again. Up to the edge, straight up. Okay, we actually got over that. And we got some kind of door here, maybe? Can we go in it? No. Unless we push down instead. Hold fire, down, up. No, it just punches. Okay. Up, we got a hockey player now. F shooting pucks at us. <laughs> Can I punch him? Oh! Oh, that's the stalker. Okay, so this is our first opponent. And he's shooting explosive hockey pucks at us. <laughs> Okay, I don't know why I was walking there. I was not pressing the direction, the walking direction. Up, oh, we got a dog now. So, just gotta, whoop. Just gotta kick the dog, unfortunately. Oh, wait, their stalker's back now. And now I'm like almost dead? I gotta be in like a kill loop or something. Okay, that went about as well as I expect. Oh. Oh. You don't get extra lives in this game. You run out of health, it's game over. Okay, so we're gonna have to try this again now. Um, at least it seems like the dogs are easy to deal with. Didn't respawn that time though. Hmm. You know, given the fact that there's no extra lives, I kind of don't want to ever fall in a pit, because I'm worried that that might be like instant death or something. And then, yeah, that wouldn't be good. Like, normally platforming makes more sense when you have extra lives, because if you make a mistake, you want to be able to recover. And one other thing I've noticed, too, is that whenever you hit an enemy like that, you actually restore health. So that's kind of interesting that you restore health simply by attacking your opponents. Oh, do I have it trapped against the wall? Or maybe not. <laughs> that would have been nice if I had it trapped against the wall. I got another dog now. So yeah, the thing I'm noticing is that depending on the range you are from the stalker, it depends on if he's going to do his hockey puck move or not. Now we got something there that says exit. I also noticed the stalker's hit points are constantly regenerating, so that's not good. And yeah, unfortunately you don't have a jump attack. That would have been really nice. I guess the one thing that's good about having to beat up the guard dogs is that you get your health back as a result. Because again, every time you hit an enemy, you gain health back. Well, okay, maybe not. I thought I was, but it seems like only the dogs give health back every time you hit them. Uh, well, that went south real quick. <laughs> okay, so the thing I'm noticing with fighting the stalker is that the timing in terms of like how it's how it be the stalker's behaving. It's like this very specific... It can't... The Stalker can't hurt you with his hockey stick directly, for whatever reason. It seems like that would be more effective than exploding hockey pucks, but... I've never tried to attack someone on a... when playing hockey, so I don't know. But... The thing is, he has no melee. Which means, the only way that Stalker can hurt me is with the hockey pucks. So... That seems to be the trick, is to try and stay close to him. This battle's been going so long that I've actually recovered most of my health just from attacking the guard dogs, but at the same time, the stalker keeps regenerating its health too, so... <laughs> yeah, so far this is not the most riveting gameplay. Oh boy. <laughs> this battle has been going on for... like, nearly eight minutes now. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Ooh, I've got him in a kick loop. Doing lots of kicks damage. Do I almost got him? Yeah, we got him! <laughs> Finally! Holy jeez. Oh, and now we're at our little game here. Ooh, unfortunately there's a time limit here. Okay, so we have two pairs that we're changing at a time. And so we have to cycle everything so that we get everything in the positions we want him in. So, unfortunately it only gives you f 60 seconds to do this, and I don't think I'm going to make it. Because, <laughs> yeah, there's only three seconds left. 
Okay, that didn't go so well. So now what? Um, looks like it's loading something. What now? Okay, I just immediately go to the next level. What is even the point of that mini game then? Okay, I'm gonna guess that this pothole is bad, so let's jump over that. And then there was some kind of guard dog on this side, I think. It looked like it went off screen and it's not coming back though. Okay, now we got some crates to jump over. So, <laughs> this seems like it wouldn't have been like the best. Oh, wait, do I have a weapon? Oh. I've got a weapon now. <laughs> How do I use it? Okay, so you use a weapon, you just use your punch move. Got it. So, now we just need something to hit with this. Um, what even is it? Like, I mean, it looks like a mace, but... Seriously? Like a medieval mace in... 2019? <laughs> I don't know about that. Okay, we've got an enemy here. Looks like he's got... some kind of... chainsaw or something? Are you gonna actually come any closer, or do you want me to just poke you? I think this guy just wants me to poke him. Okay, this is the Stalker, so apparently this level- I'm already fighting the the main bad guy for this level. Uh, where'd he go? Did he just phase through the boxes? Uh... Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, there he is. <laughs> this game's got some weird things going on with positioning. Okay, we seem to be trading blows pretty pretty equally here. So long as I can keep up the pace, I should be able to get him. And there was a med kit on the ground over there, so... If I win this battle, which I just did... So, there we go. I should be able to go back, get this med kit, and heal up. Hopefully. Do I have to put the mace down first? How do I actually put the mace down? Okay, now let's try to pick... No, I'm just picking up the mace. I want the med kit. Give me the med... No, not the mace! Okay, put the mace down. Put it down. Okay. Mace is put down. Let's pick up the med kit. There we go. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, why wouldn't it just let you pick up the med kit while you're holding the weapon? Okay, we got another one of these link puzzles. Let me pay closer attention to the shuffling. Okay, that's too much shuffling to memorize. And it's only giving me 50 seconds this time. Holy jeez. Like, I mean, I could do this if I had more time, but it really doesn't give you a lot of time. I'm guessing this is just for bonus points, too, because it, last time it just brought me to the next level. So is it going to do that again? I mean, we got the fast load bars there. Is it going to do it? Just bring me to the next level again? Yeah, there we go. Or maybe it's a health refill. I don't know. You know, I'm pretty sure Arnold Schwarzenegger can run faster than this in real life. Like, I don't know for sure, I've never met the guy, but I'm just gonna make a safe assumption on that. Oh, we do have a weapon on the ground here. I don't know what it is, but we have it. Oh, this guy's shooting. That's, um... That's highly suspect. No, stop shooting that. Holy jeez. Okay, the game suddenly got stupidly difficult. <laughs> and I'm going to guess you don't get continues. So if I put in my initials here, and then go to start again, I'm going to guess it's going to put me right back at the beginning. So I'm going to wait for the high scores to start flashing. I was doing some loading. And then... Okay, high scores are flashing. Does it take me back to the... Nope. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so that was The Running Man. It's basically a simulator where you beat up guard dogs with kicking, and then punch and kick various quote-unquote stalkers, who constantly regenerate hit points while Schwarzenegger is also regenerating hit points. 
and sometimes you get weapons, and it supposedly took place four years ago, and yeah, this is <laughs> this is kind of a bizarre... Like, I mean, I know they used to make um, movie games out of just about anything for the Commodore 64, but this seems like one of the last ones, maybe? Like, I mean, from what I understand in the movie, there's like this game show and such, so you would almost think that would translate perfectly fine, but quite frequently game shows don't translate perfectly fine into actual games, so I don't know. I think what I'm trying to say here is that given the nature of the movie itself, this is probably the best we could have hoped for, except I think I would have liked it a little more playable than this, like maybe have more instantaneous attacks instead of a ginormous delay on your punches. Yeah, just based on what we've seen so far of other Commodore 64 titles, I would say this one is average at best. Maybe a little below average. Although it is neat that the way the audio has been designed, it has the digitized sound effects going on. That is kind of neat. It's not something you would typically see with a Commodore 64 game. But those sound effects are very quiet compared to the music, which might be an emulator thing, but somehow I don't think that's the case. And yeah, it, it this this is average. This is perfectly average. 